Life is another one of those something goes horribly wrong in outer space kind of movies, but it's a lot less like Gravity and a lot more like Alien. In fact, the similarities to Alien are uncanny to the point where it can be nearly considered a ripoff. They even use a flamethrower. You know what though? I'm perfectly fine with ripoffs as long as they're done well, and I'd say that life manages to hit the right marks. The story takes place on the International Space Station with a crew of six astronauts and scientists, taking place at some indeterminate point in the near future. Mankind retrieves some soil samples from Mars which contains a microscopic organism. The discovery rocks mankind as the first solid proof of a life form originating beyond Earth. Calvin Coolidge Elementary was chosen among 11,000 schools for this honor. We named the Martian after our school, Calvin. But, if you've seen the trailers, then you'll know that things don't go over so well. Calvin develops at an extremely rapid growth rate, along with impressive intelligence and strength for its size. And, of course, it's a real effective killer, too. The crew must now quarantine Calvin and make it back to Earth safely. But it wouldn't be an outer space movie without a good sprinkle of Murphy's Law and just general survivor incompetence. Similar to how Alien had strong connections to the slasher genre, so too can life be compared to films like Friday the 13th and Halloween. A good chunk of the movie is spent in suspense, waiting for Calvin to show up and then kill its next victim in a horribly gruesome manner, as the characters desperately plan their next move before falling one by one. One of the things that really annoys me with life is that Calvin is way too powerful. At least Jason Voorhees wasn't a big fan of water, and the Xenomorph was really scared of fire. Well, at least it was in the Alien Isolation video game. Calvin, on the other hand, is portrayed as being unstoppable, along with being a really slippery guy who can sneak in pretty much anywhere. Every effort that goes towards containing or destroying Calvin either foils due to bad luck or because it's simply unbeatable. Calvin's ability to survive in that vacuum and temperature is astonishing. But he can't live much longer out there. It gets frustrating after a while because it feels like a little kid that keeps making up the rules to make sure he wins. He's really small and fast and super strong. Okay, so I'll burn it. Uh, no, he can survive that too. Okay, so I'll toss him out into space. Nuh-uh, he can survive space too. It's like, come on, man, give it a rest. And it keeps going for the whole movie. But while Calvin is a real Mary Sue of a monster, the rest of the cast are pretty cool. One of them is a terribly incompetent idiot who completely ruins a containment shelter, but I won't spoil who I'm talking about. For the most part, though, everyone is really likable, and they all act pretty realistic. They're calm and intelligent, while becoming more and more desperate as Calvin continues to spend time with them. The movie tries a little hard to hammer in some sentimental moments. When I was in the military, we go to Syria, you know. We'd set up a hospital, treat all the casualties, and then come back a week, a week or two later, and I mean, the whole village would just be bombed out. But it's never so bad that it gets in the way of the plot. It's easy to care about these characters since they're all charming, so you naturally root for them to survive, and it makes it that much more impactful when they eventually die off. Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds are obviously the top paid actors here, but I give credit to a great performance from everyone, and I especially like Japanese actor Hiroyuki Sanada and Belarusian actress Olga Di... Di... Ho... I am so sorry for butchering your name. No one quite stands out as exceptional, but they all complement each other really well. The special effects look really good, and I'm glad that Sony Pictures didn't skimp on the budget here. But what really caught me off guard was the musical score, which is surprisingly strong, hitting you with some sudden tension that complements the beautiful cinematography extremely well. No comments. I've got to jump. <sighs> It 
If you're looking for some straight up science fiction, like Star Trek, Star Wars, or Interstellar, then you won't find that here. But if you want an alien creature slasher flick that pays homage to the classic alien and starts killing people half an hour into the movie, then this is what you're looking for. Even though Calvin's power is pretty ridiculous, it helps that the characters are interesting and well acted and that the stakes are high enough to keep you on edge. It's not groundbreaking by any means, but it takes bits and pieces of the genre that have worked well in the past and puts them to great use here. Life is a depressingly hopeless good time of a film to watch. My father used to read this to me when I was a kid. Good night, room. Good night, moon. Good night, cow jumping over the moon. <laughs> Good night, light and the red balloon. Thank you for watching my review of life. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe. I remember when I saw my first picture of Earth. <laughs>